DOJ Special Counsel Jack Smith has now, just moments ago, we just got this printed here in our newsroom, filed his reply to Donald Trump's effort to stop the trial and the win that Jack Smith got in that appeals court. Uh, they are citing Donald Trump's alleged effort to perpetuate himself in power, the charged crimes strike at the heart of our democracy, and Smith says the Supreme Court should not stay or delay this case, that the trial should commence on the planned schedule, which means if he won, Jack Smith filing this tonight, that trial could begin in a matter of weeks. Um, this is the big case everyone's been watching. We have a very special guest who agreed to jump in unscheduled because we are following two breaking news stories. Andrew Weissman uh, has experience in exactly these kind of probes. He served in the Mueller special counsel probe. He was FBI general counsel. He knows these uh, cases quite well. Andrew, uh, welcome. Good, good morning. <laughs> good afternoon, I should say. I'm busy um, reading, as you can tell, um, I, there's a 39-page filing that was made just moments yeah. ago by Jack Smith. So let's start uh, in that filing, and that's why we go to you in terms of reading it. One of the basic uh, kind of baseline points that Jack Smith makes early uh, and that you have to make uh, in this kind of case, if you're, if you're appealing to say, no, don't delay, don't stay it. He says, and I'm going to say this in plain English, and then you can uh, be erudite and walk us through it. Uh, Jack Smith says, with all confidence, we won at the district level. We won in the appeals court. We expect to win the legal issues here. So, because we are likely to win, uh, we should not be paused or punished in the process of defending our wins. And therefore, there shouldn't be a stay. Um, explain that baseline opening argument here. Absolutely. So um, the first thing to note is this tells you how important for Jack Smith speed is. Um, he had until next Tuesday to make his filing. But um, as we, I think, all expected, he was not going to take the full amount of time and indeed just took one day uh, to, to put this 39-page uh, submission uh, in. I may have the pages slightly wrong, but it's a substantial uh, 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 submission. Um, and what he's saying is Donald Trump has asked for a continued stay of the Judge Chutkin trial. And that is that is the main issue that Jack Smith needs to win on. In other words, even if the court wants to accept this, to hear the appeal, to decide whether there should be this um, absolute immunity claim. And I think everyone thinks there's no way the Supreme Court, even if they take this case, it's going to be to reverse the district court and the Court of Appeals. It would really to be affirm it. They're saying, do not stay the case. Let Judge Chutkin go forward. Because indeed, there won't be a trial any day now. It won't be happening imminently um, because Judge Chutkin needs to do a lot of pretrial work, even if there was a green light immediately. So this is really a plea for the Supreme Court, whatever it does, whether it decides not to take the case, whether it decides to take the case, do not issue a stay. Um, because there'll be ample time, even in the worst case scenario, for the court to issue its decision, but to let Judge Chutkin go forward to prepare the case for trial. Because otherwise, what you're really doing is granting um, essentially, um, in a sort of a stage whisper or sub silencio, as we would say legally, um, that you're really saying um, there will be no legal accountability in this case right. for Donald Trump. Yeah, I think you've just underlined that, the headline here being, we're talking about the timeline, the calendar of this coup trial. And Jack Smith won in the district court. He won the appeal. Um, we have no reason to think that in the end he would lose, uh, at least, you know, it could narrow it slightly. But we don't expect the Supreme Court to suddenly announce that um, former presidents um, are, are superhuman people with license to kill and all the rest. And so what Jack Smith has done tonight, right now, here with the new filing, is say, um, don't make the mistake of delaying us, which would actually potentially, as you explained, undercut the whole thing. Uh, Andrew Weissman stays with us. Uh, he is literally the perfect guest you could have on the prosecution side of this breaking news. On the appeals side, on how the Supreme Court makes these fine-grained distinctions, I would argue MSNBC now has the other perfect guest, uh, former acting solicitor general of the United States, Neil Kotchal. Uh, thank you for jumping in here. I know both of you have been waiting on this, as have we. So, Neil, I'm just going to read from that same point I was discussing with Andrew, and then I'm curious, anything else you want to educate us on? Uh, but right up top, um, we see Jack Smith's filing say... With regard to Trump trying to delay, um, Trump cannot show, as he must, 
to get the win, to get a, a delay, quote, a fair prospect of success in this court. And then he goes on to write, Trump cannot show the balance of equities. Lawyers speak for what's good or not. Is this a good idea or not? Um, or the public interest, quote, favors continued delay of this criminal proceeding, of this Trump trial that's planned. Uh, walk us through that, Neil, and, and as I said, anything else. Yeah, so remember, Donald Trump lost his claim about absolute immunity resoundingly before our nation's second highest court last week, the D.C. Circuit. And that group of judges included a very conservative, really well-respected judge. And he lost every vote on that, and he lost it every which way you possibly can. So Donald Trump's lawyers have now gone, Ari, to the Supreme Court and are basically asking two things. One that the absolute immunity claim be reversed, that the Supreme Court hear the case and reverse and say, Donald Trump has absolute immunity. And number two, that he gets what we call a stay, which is basically he wants to delay his criminal trial until after the U.S. Supreme Court rules. And Jack Smith was given a week yesterday by the U.S. Supreme Court to respond to this stay request. Smith took one day because as this really terrific 35 plus page filing shows, it just kind of wrote itself. And basically Smith is making a few arguments. Number one, that in order to get a stay, in order for Trump to delay, he's got to convince a majority of the Supreme Court that the Court of Appeals decision is likely to be reversed. And on that, Smith is just so good in saying, no chance. Let me just read to you one quote from this brief. Trump's position finds no support in constitutional text, separation of powers, principles, history, or even logic. And if the radical claim were accepted, it upended understandings of presidential accountability that have prevailed throughout history while undermining democracy and the rule of law, particularly where, as here, a former president is alleged to have committed crimes to stay in office despite losing an election, thereby seeking to subvert constitutional procedures for transferring the power and to disenfranchise millions of voters. That's a remarkable claim to be made against a former president in a brief to the United States Supreme Court by our Justice Department. But that's what this is about. And Jack Smith is not mincing any words. So that's the first point, that there's a likelihood that there's no likelihood that Trump's going to get this. And then he goes on for page after page. It's just devastating, Ari, explaining why Trump's claim fails constitutional logic principles and the like. And then the last thing, and I think we're going to hear a lot about this. At the very end, Smith says, look, Supreme Court, if you want to hear this case, hear it quickly. Expedite the appeal. We're ready to go in March, and we want Let's, you to decide it that quickly. Um, let, me, let me read that, and then, and then you can break it down. I'm curious uh, Andrew's reaction as well, because that's the plan B here. I just want to reset as we do around the news, because I got two super smart, uh, fast-talking lawyers here. Uh, the breaking news is that Jack Smith has now stepped up and very quickly a, you know, filed his Supreme Court filing, um, telling the Supreme Court, we won, we want to put Trump on trial, we don't accept any delay, we don't think this should be delayed or stayed. Uh, and both of our lawyers here are with me on that. And so, Neil, um, that's basically plan A. Plan B, you just alluded to, um, which it, he basically, Jack Smith says, full steam ahead, green light the coup trial. Then he says, if you must review this, uh, if you feel the Supreme Court that somehow um, the DOJ is wrong, that there's some reason you got to get into it. Case of first impression, things we've heard. We've we heard from Attorney General Holder about that recently on the show. He says, and, and I apologize to the viewers here, I'm just going to read right off this. We don't have it. It's so new. We don't have it yet for the screen. But he says, if the court believes that Trump must have this, this review at this time, I'm reading from middle of page three to both of you, um, the government then, the DOJ, asked to treat this petition as a writ of, of certiorari, basically that you would review the whole thing, uh, the case, and then have expedited briefing. And then Jack Smith says, a fast schedule would permit the court to, quote, issue its opinion and judgment, resolving the immunity issue as promptly as possible this term, so that if the court rejects Trump's immunity claim, a timely and fair trial can begin with minimal additional delay. I believe that's part of what you were referring to, Neil. So, so break that down for us and then Andrew. Yeah. I, th I think what we're likely to hear from the Republicans who are trying to defend Trump is, look, Jack Smith is signaling weakness here. He's saying the Supreme Court should set an expedited briefing schedule, not deny to hear the case. That's not what Smith is saying. There are 36 pages of this brief that say Supreme Court 
There is absolutely nothing here. Don't hear this case.